This may be one of the few cars that needs no introduction. I mean, it's been around since 1983, and that should tell you how popular the Toyota Camry is. Despite living in a world dominated by SUVs, the Camry remains steadfastly familiar. And those who love it need not fear any of the changes the 2025 model brings, and new families might find something to love as well. There are now only three grades available for the Camry and they're all exclusively offered with a hybrid powertrain. The model on test here is the Ascent, which is the base level grade. And with its new tech and design, its price point is slightly higher than the outgoing model. But its main rival, the Mazda 6 Sport, is only a smidge more affordable. It's interesting to note though that the other rivals, the Honda Accord and Skoda Superb, are now only being offered in one highly specified grade and with corresponding price points. So if you are in the market for a sedan, the Camry is offering pretty good value despite the price hike. Standard equipment includes an eight inch touchscreen multimedia system with sat nav, dual zone climate control and keyless entry and start. But for some reason, the base model still misses out on rain sensing wipers. It's great to see the new gen model now comes with upgraded USB-C ports and wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard. But the full specs are in my detailed written review at carsguide.com.au if you need more info. I'm not going to lie, I'm a real fan of the previous shape and still really like it. But the new shape sees a tapered front with slim LED headlights and a cute rear design with a neat little spoiler. Overall, it looks more modern and dare I say it, sporty. The interior sees a completely restyled dashboard that now incorporates its tech screens far more stylishly than before. It's still very driver orientated though, and the cloth seats look far nicer than the stuff you usually get in base models. And there are enough soft touch points to make this cabin feel quite pleasant to be in, despite it still looking a little bit heavy on the plastics. Access and space in the front row is excellent and the front seats are relatively comfortable around town but do lack lumbar support which you are going to notice on a longer trip. Individual storage is great, you get loads of cubbies in this and I love that they didn't get rid of the handy utility tray up front. You also get a sunglasses holder which I always appreciate. The touchscreen multimedia system looks good and is simple to use, which is always a great combo. I like that the phone mirroring apps are now wireless as it's one less cable to worry about, but for charging options, you do get three USB-C ports and a 12 volt port. Being a base model, you do miss out on a wireless charging pad though. Sedans are often king when it comes to back row comfort and the Ascent is no different. Taller passengers are definitely going to be happy with the leg and headroom back here. Access to this row is pretty good, but the low ceiling does mean occasionally you may bump your head. The only issue I have is that cloth seats give me a little bit of anxiety, especially when you have a kid like mine that likes to put his feet on everything. I think if you invest in a seat cover, you may save yourself some cleaning time. There are Isofix child seat mounts on the outboard seat plus three top tethers. Two seats are going to fit best and I had no issue fitting my Monster Booster seat this week. The only issue you may have is getting a sore back from bending down to buckle in a kit. Storage and amenities are pretty good for a base model back here with two map pockets, four drink holders, as well as those upgraded USB-C ports and directional air vents. The boot storage hasn't changed and still has a large 524 litres of capacity available. The boot aperture isn't too narrow either and you don't get a power tailgate with this but this lid is pretty light to operate. The 2025 Camry has the new hybrid system that Toyota is rolling out now as well as a new electronic continuously variable transmission, both of which are welcome changes to this 2.5 litre four-cylinder engine. This combo produces up to 170 kilowatts of power, which is up from the previous model, but it still produces 221 newton meters of torque. The outgoing model already had an excellent combined fuel cycle figure, but the new model does improve it further with a very low four liters per 100 kilometers. Based on the 50 litre fuel tank and that combined cycle, you should see a theoretical driving range of up to 1,250 kilometres, which is fantastic for a family car. 
My real world usage has actually come out at 4.4 liters. And that is a really great result, especially considering that I've done mostly open road driving. So I would expect it to be even better in an urban environment. Toyota really gets the hybrid thing right because the way this flips between the electric motor and the engine components is just seamless. You don't even notice it's happening and that makes it very smooth to drive. Power delivery is very prompt and responsive and that makes this feel rather zippy or as zippy as a mid-size sedan can feel and that makes this very friendly in the city as well. Steering is direct and nimble enough to make this feel not sporty in cornering, but well-tuned, and you're not thrown around when you are cornering, which is great. It doesn't have the on-road presence of, say, a sports car, but you're going to feel very happy on a winding road. The visibility is sometimes hampered in this because of the average size windows and the big pillars. You do find that when you're going down a hill, or at least I did, I was bobbing and weaving to see around this rear view mirror and my car seat did block out some of the rear view vision as well. You don't really notice the length of the Camry when you are driving it, but when you're parking it, it does remind you that it's almost five meters in length. But unusually for a base model, you get an excellent 360 degree view camera system in this. So it does make light work of any car park. The Camry has a brand spanking new five star and cap safety rating from testing done this year and now sports eight airbags, including a front center airbag. There's a long list of safety features and most of which are not intrusive to daily driving. Although the adaptive cruise control can be a bit too quick to slow down with its new cornering feature, but the full safety specs are in my detailed written review at carsguide.com.au if you need more info. Toyota offers the Camry with a five year unlimited kilometer warranty, but that can be up to seven years if you exclusively service with Toyota and on schedule. And that makes it very good for the class. You get five years cap price servicing and services cost just $255, which is very reasonable. And servicing intervals are also good at every 12 months or 15,000 kilometers, whichever occurs first. You gotta love a car that knows its audience and the 9th gen Toyota Camry Ascent proves why it's still a popular choice. On top of the space and practicality, you get a shiny new design and tech. And for a base model, this is very well rounded. So what's not to love? And that's why it gets the score that's on your screen now. But if you're after more details, check out the full review at carsguide.com.au. See you next week.